let's earn ent to actually learn ent like never before hello and welcome back to one more episode of ent by dr pranshu mehta today we'll be seeing the clinical part of the middle ear we have read about the middle ear before but today we are going to see how the middle ear actually looks so we'll be getting inside the middle ear to see what it looks like in reality so let's start up and get inside of the middle ear so to start with let's just quickly recap about the middle ear whatever we had read in the previous video a middle ear is the space inside of the ear which is cuboidal in shape or you can say room like structure which has anterior posterior medial lateral a roof and a floor now when we examine middle ear what we see through the tympanic membrane is what we call as the mesotympanum the part of the middle ear that lies above the mesotympanum is the epitympanum and the one which lies below is the hypotympanum now the structures which actually we see when we are examining the tympanic membrane which lie in the mesotympanum are the handle of the malleus as you can see i'm drawing it the head lies in the epitympanum and hence the head of the malleus we cannot see when we are examining the patient or when we are examining the middle ear through a total perforation present in the middle ear Uh, other than malleus what we can see is the incus now this is the body of the incus which lies in the epitympanum but the long process lies in the mesotympanum this one is the long process this lies in the mesotympanum and hence is visible if there is a total perforation now the short process in the body of the incus as you can see is in the epitympanum and cannot be seen now the yellow one which i am drawing is the stapes stapes with its two crura and the foot plate is present in the mesotympanum and if there is a total perforation of the past tensa the stapes can be seen now this is the promontory which will lie on the medial wall of the middle ear it is a bulge of the basal turn of the cochlea and is visible through the total perforation posterior superior to it where there is the foot plate of the stapes is the and beneath that is the uh, round oval window and uh, posterior inferiorly will lie the round window so promontory posterior superiorly the oval window and posterior inferiorly the round window so this is what the middle ear looks like if there is a complete or i should say a total perforation of the tympanic membrane now let's see how it looks in real so we are examining this middle ear through the tympanic membrane we have a total perforation of tympanic membrane now we are seeing it through the tympanic membrane it's a total perforation so we can see the structures of the middle ear now if you want to see closely you will see that we have annulus on all three sides but it is deficient superiorly so it's not there on the superior aspect now this annulus when it goes up it curves medially to come and attach to the lateral process of the malleus forming the aml and pml the anterior malleal fold and the posterior malleal fold now the part of the tympanic membrane that is lined by this annulus is what we call the past tensa which in this case is uh, not present because we are seeing a case of total perforation okay then the part above it the part which is triangular in shape is the pars flaccida now uh, coming to the point that what structures we'll be able to see when they are examining the middle ear through this what structures we'll be able to see we'll be able to see this the handle of the malleus we can see a bone that is the handle of the malleus now the head of the malleus the anterior process and the lateral process we won't be able to see because they lie in the epitympanum the head lies in the epitympanum now other than that we'll be able to see the long process of incus this the green one is the long process of incus the body of the incus as well as the short process will lie in the epitympanum and the body of the incus where it forms the joint the malleolo incudal joint it is also not seen because this joint also lies in the epitympanum so we will be able to see only the long process of the incus now this long process of incus will have the lenticular process along with it which will make a joint with the stapes now stapes we will be able to see now in stapes we have the head neck and the two crura then attached to a foot plate the foot plate will be covering the oval window now the point is that the is joint we will be able to see clearly the is joint the incudus tapedial joint now coming from the posterior wall we can actually see the tendon of the muscle stapedius it is coming from the pyramid and attaching to the stapes now as you can see this is the promontory posterior superior to it will be the oval window and posterior inferior to it will be the round window now moving further ahead and again seeing the middle ear closely we will see the ossicles so first let's understand the ossicles in the diagram and then we'll see how they look in reality okay so first of all i've made this we are facing the medial wall and on my right is the anterior wall on my left will be the posterior wall this is the malleus 
I have made this head, anti process, lateral process, and the handle of the malleus. So we know that malleus forms a joint with the incus. So this is the body of the incus. These two are art articulating and forming a joint. The incudomalleal joint or malleo-incudial joint. This is the lenticular process below the long process. Then it will articulate with the head of the stapes. Stapes has two crura, anterior and posterior. Posterior one is thicker than the anterior crura. And then there comes the foot plate which covers the oval window. So in this, the ossicles lie like this. What we see or what the uh, parts of the ossicle that lie in the mesotympanum are the handle of the malleus, long process of incus and stapes. Now this is the pyramid I've made on the posterior wall from which is coming the muscle, this tendon of the muscle which is the stapedius muscle. The red one denotes the promontory. Now from the promontory, the oval window lies posterior superior and posterior inferior is the round window about which I have already told you. Now when we look above the promontory, above the oval window, we see a bony canal which is horizontal on the medial wall. This is the horizontal canal which is a bony canal which houses the facial nerve. Now I'll just write the structures which are seen in the mesotympanum. The handle of the malleus, you can see that is malleus, this is the handle of the malleus. For incus, the part which we see is this, the long process of the incus. This is the long process. Then the other parts which we can see, we can see the lenticular process, though the lenticular process we will see as a whole, as the part of the IS joint, the incudostipedial joint. Now uh, the other part which we can see is the head of the stapes, then the foot plate and the two crura. Now as you can see the most important structure over here is the IS joint, the incudostipedial joint formed between the incus and the stapes. Now this is the pyramid and from the pyramid to the stapes will be the stapedius muscle. Then on the medial wall we see the promontory and above the oval window and the promontory we see a horizontal bony canal that houses the tympanic part of the facial nerve that is horizontal in nature. So now let's move on to the real image. Now let's take the camera a little further in so that we can see the structures of the posterior wall as well. Okay, so as you can see over here this is the handle of the medius. The head won't be visible but then this is the long process of incus. Then this is stapes. Uh, the head of the stapes is making the joint with lenticular process of the incus forming the IS joint. This is very important, the incudostipedial joint. This is the joint sometimes which even we can see through the tympanic membrane when the tympanic membrane is intact. Okay, then this is the pyramid on the posterior wall and from it is coming the stapedius muscle tendon. This is the tendon. Okay, now let's quickly name them, the malleus, the incus, the stapes. Now, stapes, you can see there are two crude, the anterior and the posterior. The posterior one is thicker than the anterior one. You can see the posterior one is thicker and the anterior one is thinner. Now, this will be the promontory, the round window, the oval window. Then, uh, if you see that will be the anterior part, this will be the posterior part. Anteriorly, we will even find the opening of the eustachian tube and posteriorly, we have the pyramid. So, that is clear. Now, if you see closely, just above the promontory, just above the oval window, we see a horizontal, this green which I am making, a horizontal uh, canal, a bony canal. This is the canal which will house the facial nerve, the horizontal part of the facial nerve or the tympanic part of the facial nerve as we see. So this is where the facial nerve will lie on the medial wall of the middle ear. Now that we have learnt about the facial nerve, let's move to another important structure in the middle ear. Yes, the sinus tympani. So to read about the sinus tympani, first I will make the full environment of the middle ear the malleus, the incus, the stapes, the foot plate of the stapes. From the posterior wall, we have the pyramid and from the pyramid, we'll have this muscle or the tendon of the muscle, the stapedius muscle. This will be the promontory on the medial wall. And as you know, posterior superior is the oval window. Just above the oval window and promontory, we have the horizontal part of the facial nerve that is turning vertical and going deep to the pyramid. Now, as you can see, this is a bony ridge from the promontory coming laterally to the lateral wall. This bony ridge is what we call the subiculum. This is subiculum. It is from medially from the promontory, laterally coming towards the lateral wall. This is called the subiculum. Now, if you see superiorly, there is another bony ridge from the promontory coming till the pyramid. This is called the ponticulus. So we have two bony ridges. Now the structure which lies here which is this structure, this green part which I am drawing, this pit which is guarded on all four sides, this is called the sinus tympani. So it is a depression, a dip or you can say a groove or a pit like structure which is guarded on all four sides, laterally by the pyramid as you can see, this is the pyramid. 
then this is pyramid laterally then medially you can see this is the promontory so medially it is guarded by the promontory then we have superior and inferior margins so first we'll talk about the uh, inferior margin you can see inferiorly this is the bony ridge the subiculum and then superiorly the bony ridge ponticulus so sinus tympani is bounded by laterally by pyramid medially by promontory inferiorly by subiculum and superiorly by ponticulus so this is what we call the sinus tympani now that we have seen how it looks on the paper let's see how it looks in real in the ear when we are examining the ear or while we are operating on the ear so let's just adjust the camera so that we can actually see the sinus tympani okay i think this should be perfect so you can see this inferiorly the bony uh, ridge coming from the promontory going laterally this is the subiculum now this is the subiculum i have shown you this is the promontory lying there on the medial wall then this is the pyramid now about the sinus tympani we have already seen that sinus tympani lies medial to the pyramid lateral to the promontory and bound inferiorly by the subiculum and superiorly by the ponticulus so this is exactly where the sinus tympani will be seen now this is a very important area because Uh, the cholesterol or the disease, even sometimes the disease mucosa will be there, and when we are observing it, we won't be able to see it because it it is a pit-like structure where we can leave behind some disease, and this is the number one cause or the most common cause of recurrence of the disease as well as the residualism. So I hope you have understood that sinus tympani forms an important part of the ear surgery. So that's it about the middle ear. If you like these videos and you understand something and you feel that you are learning something over here that is conceptual. do like and share these videos as well as subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the like button if you have not seen the previous videos regarding the middle ear anatomy do go and watch the middle ear anatomy video before watching this video so that you can develop a better concept because the middle ear has been taken up in detail in the previous video this video was just for making you understand how the middle ear looks in real life and clearing some concepts regarding the anatomy and the anatomical orientation well that's for today hope to see you for the next video till then keep reading keep learning